stool. And I don't want one of these ugly ones. So I've been on Pinterest and I have picked this stool, which is really expensive. And I think I can find a way to make it myself. So here we are. I've gone to Ikea and I've chosen this really basic pine wood stool. So my idea is to work with this as the base and then add to it to get to the look that I'm trying to achieve. So there's a few things that I'm going to need to do in order to make this a good copy. I always spend a lot of time thinking about this because it's like you can copy the concept of something quite easily, but it's the details that do elevate it to be a good copy. And I always say that because I think it's really true. So one thing that's really important is the size of the little semicircles and then also the sort of blockish shape to it. One key thing that I look at when I compare the thing from Ikea that I got versus the one that I'm trying to copy is that the Ikea one has a lip on the top of it. Now, if I keep that lip, it won't be a good copy of this. You could do it and it wouldn't matter, but I really wanna make it look as close to the original as I can. So I'm going to have to find a way, and this will be a little bit more work, but it will pay off, I think to make the edge go down straight rather than having the lip. Now, I could get a saw and saw it, but I'm not gonna do that. The other thing you could do, if you didn't have the stool requirement that I have, there are some other little side tables at Ikea that don't have that lip on the top level. That would make this project a lot more simple. So if you wanted to do that and you didn't need to be able to stand on it, you could just use one of them. But I'm not going to make something that I don't need. I really need a stool. So it's gonna be a little bit more complicated for me, but it's actually gonna be useful to me. I've got a plan. I'm gonna build this little stool and knowing that it's already got the structural stability that it needs, all I'm adding is aesthetics. So it doesn't need to be heavy or solid or anything like that. So also in the spirit of like reducing waste, I'm gonna use cardboard. I've got lots of cardboard that I might as well make use of. And so then the next question is the little domes on the design. How do I create them? Well, I have an idea. In the spirit of sustainability, of trying to use rubbish to create this, I'm gonna use Nespresso pods. I think it'll work. And I think they're just the right size and that saves me having to buy anything else. So that's my plan. My challenges I think I'm going to have. I think currently the legs are not chunky enough. I need to find a way with cardboard to make them look thicker. I want it to really look close to the original because like that's the challenge, isn't it? The other thing that might be difficult is the Nespresso pods because they have little ridges in them and I need to find a way to disguise that. Otherwise it will look like I've put Nespresso pods on a stool and I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look like it costs thousands of dollars, you know? So yeah, my main challenges are gonna be the legs, I think, and making the pods not look like they came from the bin, <laughs> basically. I don't want any of this to look like it came from the bin, even though all of the components that I'm adding to it really are from the bin. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put this together and once I've got the stool in front of me, I'm gonna get the cardboard that I have and work with that and just start to maybe try and make some templates and figure it out. Okay, I've got my four pieces. These are going to be the legs and I've just got to get these right. I'm gonna put the cardboard around like this and I'm going to make this outside shape of it and then I might come back in and, and do the inside. But the top I'm planning on just doing with tape just to secure it in place. So one limitation I have with this, which is why some of the other IKEA products would be better if you didn't need an actual stool. When you compare it to the inspiration image, the bottom gap starts about here. I have to work with the fact that my base down here is going to be lower. So the Nespresso pods, I need to make sure that ratio is right. So I think they're a good size. Probably has to be at least three down the leg, maybe more, but I do need at least the width. The length is not really the problem right now, it's the width. I need it to come out to here really, just so that they're not out of proportion. So I'm gonna just try this now, just taping it up and getting just this structure and see if I like it. So funny, I was just about to start putting stuff on and I've just seen this. It says no standing. So it's not actually intended to be a stool for standing on. But I have stood on it and it feels very sturdy to me. I'm hoping that it's really just more of like, but they, they do advertise it as like a kitchen stool to like sit on. So surely if you can sit on it, you can stand on it. It's 
a bit wobbly. But like, I'm this far gone now, th this is what I'm doing. I'm hoping the fact that it says no standing on it is more of like some kind of legal compliance thing than actually, it's like, yeah, you can stand on it. We just don't want you to sue us if you fall off it. Maybe? I don't know, that, that, I'm just going with it though. I'm just gonna ignore the sticker that is here on the top of my stool. This is my creation so far. <laughs> it looks like a pile of rubbish. Um, and that's because it is. Uh, but you can see the vision starting to come to life. So you can see the rough shape that currently I've got a really small leg hole. And maybe that's what I'll end up doing because if you put that there in the middle and then you put the second one there, is that then what I do? And I just go down like that. I think it is the right measurements for this version of it. And I kind of don't mind it. I could do, I might do two rows. We'll see how we go though, later on. I might actually put this one on Instagram and get feedback on it to make the decision of whether I do that or that. Because I can't quite decide. I think I'm going to plaster it and then put these on and then maybe do a final coat. I don't know. But I do need to find a way to deal with these ridges. I'm thinking of watering down the plaster and dipping these in there and hoping that that might get the right vibe. Not too sure. My garbage stool is coming together. So this is what my living room looks like in the afternoon sun because of my disco balls. It's so lovely in here. I just couldn't resist being in here and enjoying the beautiful light. This literally, it's, it's just so beautiful and it looks like it goes right around the room. It's just, and there's, a, I've got a friend here. It literally just goes all over the ceiling, right around the room. It's so beautiful. So I finished this phase. The next phase is going to be putting plaster on it. We'll see once we've got one layer on there, just like, what are we working with, you know? So I quickly realized that I needed a lot more tape on here just to get it more stable and sturdy. So I had a better base to put the plaster on. So once that was done, it was ready for the joint tape, which I started at the top and then also did along the corners. And what I was specifically trying to do was to pinch out the sides, especially along the edge so that I could create a sharp corner. You can see on the tape along the side that there's a gap from that top lip as it goes down. And that's exactly what I wanted because I was trying to create almost like scaffolding to continue from the top lip down in one straight line to make it more of that boxy shape that I wanted. So I honestly don't even know what I was thinking when I started adding plaster, when I'd only added joint tape on the edges, I quickly realized that wasn't going to work. So I had to stop and then add the joint tape all over the entire thing. And then I could continue the plastering. I don't, I really don't know what I was thinking. And then, yes, I was adding the plaster with what actually is a knife that is supposed to be used for icing a cake. But that's what I had and I thought that it really is similar. I, I found this process very similar to icing a cake. So why not use the same tool for it? It was actually very, very therapeutic and quite enjoyable just to gradually and slowly just smooth it down again and again. So as I'm adding the first layer of plaster, I'm really just trying to get plaster onto the shape and just create this roughly, knowing that I can't get it perfect the first time, but I just wanna create something there that I can then come back and sand and refine later on. I also decided at this point that I wasn't going to get involved in the detailed edges of the legs and things like that because I just wanted to focus on these larger, bigger areas first. So while I waited for the first coat of render to dry, I turned my attention to the Nespresso pods. And after much trial and error, I figured out that the best way to remove the pod was to slice it around like this when the base is lying flat. And in case you were wondering, this is what the inside of an Nespresso pod looks like before you tip out the coffee. So to deal with the ridges on the Nespresso pods, my idea was to get watered down plaster and add that on top to create one smooth surface that was also the same as the rest of the stool. I dipped the Nespresso pod just straight into the mixture and this didn't work at all. As I looked at it, I thought, yeah, of course it doesn't work. It needs something to stick to. So then I tried a layer of paint underneath 
and once the paint was dry, I dipped it in the mixture just like before and this time it totally worked. So lesson learned, make sure your plaster's got something to stick to. So my focus when I started sanding was really to try to use the flat surfaces that I had to try and even out these surfaces because I was going to come in with another layer of plaster and could fill in those gaps. So I was really just trying to create a base level of flatness to then fill in the potholes, if you will. After this, I started making myself a coffee. And as I went to throw out an empty Nespresso pod box, a little bit of a thought came across my mind. And I thought, hang on a minute, these actually could just be the legs. I should have just used these. And so I took it over to the stool just to see size-wise if it was going to work. And it was literally the perfect size to have used as a template for the legs. It was a little bit taller than the legs of the stool, but I could have just trimmed that part off and I could have had perfectly even, chunky legs just using these boxes. But I couldn't let that get me down, so I went ahead and just added the next layer of plaster to the surface that I had just sanded. So the domes had had a second coat, but I think they really needed a third coat to fully hide those little stripes that the Nespresso pods have. So then my stool was ready for sanding, and this time I was really working on those corners to make them sharp, and you can see that there was still a lot of sanding to do, but the surface was a lot flatter than the first time and each time I was really just refining that and making it smoother and smoother. By making as much of this flat as possible, each layer I was really only just filling in potholes rather than creating an entire surface like I was in the beginning. You can see on the inside how flimsy it looks internally, but I'm just going to go with that and not let that bother me. So for my third coat of plaster, I decided to tip the stool upside down and focus on those bottom areas and all of those detailed areas around the legs, which I'd really been avoiding. What I found worked best for the legs was to use a wet foam brush to smooth down the plaster so that I could smooth it around the edges and make it look like it continued into the back of the legs even though it doesn't and it's just cardboard back there. My advice is definitely to take this really slowly and gently and just lightly keep brushing and brushing and brushing like you're painting a painting really and to do it really slowly and gradually and basically don't be impatient. When it was all dried and sanded, finally it was time to paint. So I bought this paint from the brand called Lick. I'd actually never tried this one before. It came really quickly and it was packaged really well. And yeah, the tin looks all like cool and everything, but also it's really functional. That handle on the top was a game changer. I just loved that it had a handle on top, what can I say? And the lid was really easy to open. There was this plastic seal here and it wasn't clear on how to remove it, but I just used a screwdriver to like flip it up and yeah so that was pretty easy and then I just pulled that plastic seal up and then I was ready to mix the paint now it came with this nice little paddle to mix it with that was really good I like the idea of keeping these because it's got the paint on it and so I can write the name of the paint on it and I can imagine you could end up with a collection of them that would also act as paint samples for the paints that you know that you already have. Now, I wasn't sure with the paint whether to go for matte or eggshell, but I ended up choosing eggshell just because I wanted something that was a little bit harder wearing. And I'm really happy with the choice. I think it worked really well. The color of the paint was called White 3. I didn't want something that was like a basic white. I wanted a real creamy white. And Honestly, this color is exactly what I was hoping it would be. It was so creamy. Even like the texture of the paint was really like thick and like painting cream on. So I was really impressed with that because it gave a lot of coverage. You probably don't need as many coats with this paint than others because it was very thick. I ended up doing two coats of paint on the stool and I think two coats was plenty. For this entire project, I didn't use a whole lot of paint. There's still probably 90% of the paint still in the tin. So that's really good because I can use that obviously in the future. But overall, I'm really happy with this brand and I definitely will be buying from them again. Now at this point, I was a little bit concerned with just how glossy the paint looked. I had bought eggshell paint and I thought that there must have been like a mix-up and instead I was given some kind of high gloss paint but that wasn't the case once it dried it was completely what I would have expected for an eggshell paint so I was really happy with that 
Meanwhile, my pods were receiving their final coat of paint and were ready to start to place onto the stool. But I had a bit of a problem. I hadn't decided what formation to place them in. I couldn't decide if I wanted to have two rows of pods across the top or just one like the original. So I put it on Instagram and got some feedback and majority rules. So I picked the top one with the two rows. And to be honest, I think it is the right choice. I think that it's obviously different from the original, but the shape of my stool is so different from the original, I think it needs its own thing. So then it was finally time to stick them down in the formation that I had decided. I used Gorilla Glue and I placed it down really carefully to make sure, of course, that I put it in exactly the right spot. And I really wanted to minimize any excess glue because I thought that that would just look really messy. So I was as careful as I possibly could be. And once the glue was dry, I was able to come in with a little makeup brush here and just do a really fine layer around those edges just to make sure it looked a little bit more smooth. And especially because the Nespresso pods were quite irregular since they were cut by me and I didn't do a very good job of it. I needed to basically use the paint to sort of just cover up all of those like inconsistencies. So it looked a lot more solid and cohesive rather than, to be honest, it looked a bit scrappy before I did that. So it sort of filled in not just the color, but also like the uneven shapes around the bottom. So once that was dry, the next day I was able to then do the next side of it. And this was a bit easier because I could use the side that I had already done as a reference to make sure that they lined up. But also that day I had a delivery and I have a confession to make. The stool was still kind of annoying me and because I had bought two from Ikea, I really just wanted to try it with a piece of wood on top that didn't have that lip. So I ordered this custom cut piece of wood. It was very, very cheap because here's the thing I realized. The original Ikea stool doesn't have pre-drilled holes for the top of the stool. So it makes no difference if you use a random piece like I've used here or the original that it came with. And already it looks so much better. It was a whole load of work trying to correct the shape with the joint tape and putting plaster over it. And this just saved so much work. So yeah, of course, I couldn't stop thinking about the Nespresso pod box legs. So I just thought, let's do one out of entirely Nespresso pod boxes because then the cardboard is all the same thickness. I started taping it and I don't know if it's partly because I had already done this once with the previous one and sort of knew my mistakes and how to do it or if this cardboard is easier to work with or what, but this was so much quicker and easier than the original way I did it. So I would definitely say that this is better, like taping these individual panels in rather than wrapping it around the corners that I did. And if you're able to get like a thinner cardboard like this, I think this is better. So for all of the rest of the steps for this one, I plan on doing it exactly the same as how I did the original. I think using the different stool top and different cardboard is gonna make all the difference in just making it easier. I think it'll probably look fairly similar, although of course this one's going to have those block legs that you can see on all sides. But what I've realized that means is I'm going to need so many more Nespresso pods and I am drinking coffee as fast as I can, but it's gonna take me quite a while to collect enough. And once I have enough used pods, I can then get started on the next phase of this stool. I think we're gonna need a part two of this video to show how this one turns out. So make sure you subscribe to be notified when that video comes out. But in the meantime, of course, I'm sure you wanna see how the first one turned out. And so here it is. I'm so happy with it. In some ways, I actually do think it kind of looks better than the original. Now mine, like up close, you can see like the texture and you know, it, it's definitely handmade, but overall, like it's exactly what I wanted. Now I still don't have enough Nespresso pods. So two sides of it still don't have the pods on, but for now I can start to use it. And once again, I'm now just in Nespresso pod collection mode. So while I focus on drinking lots of coffee to build my collection to complete the other two sides, I need to think about where I'm going to put this long-term. Now, keeping in mind that I've got my other one on the go, I think that I might end up putting them together in a room. You know, the two stools, 
animals are not gonna be exactly the same because they've got those different shapes. So they're really gonna be like sisters, not twins. But I think they might look interesting together. It might be a bit too full on though, so we'll have to see. So if you're interested in making this yourself, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to all of the materials that I used. And if you wanna see how the other still turns out, make sure you subscribe.